Hey, welcome. My name is Matthew Peterson. I am a trainer uh, in Northeast Florida with a company called Pragmatic Works. And once a week, I like to put out a blog or a video on either common questions that I get within my training sessions or unique asks. And for this video, this is a common question that I get when people start working with data that's geographical and they want to see that on an actual map. Sometimes they don't get the results that they were thinking they were getting. So I want to talk about some of the common troubleshooting areas of how to fix your maps, uh, as well as how to make them the most accurate possible. So let's talk about the first part. A lot of times when you are given data, sometimes you don't have enough data. It's not specific enough. So for example, let's take a look at this data source that I currently have. So as you're taking a look here, I have a geography table. And in this geography table, it's been giving me a facility ID for a concert venue the address of it, the city, and the state. Now, if I were wanting to actually see this based on a map, this is not going to be good because if I just put city there, city is too ambiguous. You know, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and there's more than just one Jacksonville in, this, in the United States. There are other Jacksonvilles in other states. So we have to be more specific. So first fix that you should always do if you're given, if this is what your data looks like, is you want to add in another column that combines the city and the state. So the way that we do that, as I've already done it here, is I just added a conditional column here, and I'll take a look at what this step is. And I just simply said I want to bring in the city column, ampersand or concatenate, then put in a comma and a space, and I put those in double quotes. And then I said now put the state values in. So we're going to take the city values and the state values, you're going to put them together, put a comma and a space in between them, and life is good. And so we would click on OK here. And then after it did that, I needed to change my data types, just going through some basic transforms here. And then I renamed the column to city state abbreviation. So let's close and apply this and let's see if it gives us what we're wanting. So as it's making my query changes over here, I can see that I have my city state abbreviation. Let's go to the report view and let's actually add a map onto this. So as we go to the report view here, we're going to go over, going to bring in a map, going to have this map take up the entire space because we don't need any other visuals for this demo here. And under geography, I want city state to be the location. So as I bring the city state to be the location, notice that we're not seeing what we think we should see. Um, we actually are only getting, I'll zoom out here, just one. Um, and this uh, Texarkana, uh, Arkansas, I think that's what it was called. Yeah, Texarkana, Arkansas. Now, why is that? Well, the reason is when we send this, we're sending this information to Bing, but currently when we put this in the location, Bing doesn't know what to treat this as. It doesn't, this is just random text to it. So we have to be very specific and we have to put this text data type into a certain kind of category. So how do we do that? Well, to put it in a category, we're going to select the city state column. So I don't care that it doesn't have a check mark. I want it to be completely gray tinged. And the minute I do that, I now have this column tools that shows up in the upper part of my screen. So again, if I don't have anything selected, column tools is not there. If I bring city state selected, I now see column tools. And now we're going to head over to the data category. And we're going to put the category. We're going to say, hey, Bing, I want you to look at this data with these kind of glasses on, so to speak. Don't think of it as random text, but put on your city glasses or whatever it might be. So let's try city. So if I come over here, I put on city because that's what we're trying to map here. I say, make these cities. Eh, we're still not getting the same results, are we? Because if we think about it, this really isn't just a city. It's a city and a state together. So we're going to change that data category one more time. City was not good enough glasses to put on. Let's tell it to now think about it as an actual place. So I'm going to change that over to a place. And once it stops working, all right, so now it looks like we are in business. So we had to change the data category. Now, what can happen with this, though, sometimes is you will start to see um, other locations that are not actually produced or they actually are put in the wrong location. Uh, sometimes what will happen is you will have something like a city that we know is in America, but it actually gets placed somewhere over in Europe or Africa because what we currently have right here is we just have the city comma with the state abbreviation. Well, the state abbreviation for us in America could also be a country abbreviation in one and other continents of the world. Also, one way we can take a look at this here, let's actually put a slicer on 
uh, our visual here. So I'm going to come over here, just add a quick slicer. And it's still working up here. So let's come over. We'll put in a slicer. And oh, that's always one of those gotchas. Let me actually click on the white space off to the side. Let's put in a slicer. And let's bring in state. So now we can see things based just on state. So if I were to click, let's say, Alaska and zoom out, now I'm seeing everything for Alaska. And now notice over here, because Bing was, Bing was uh, taking a little bit longer in the background to map out all of my uh, cities. But I knew that Alaska, when I do this, shouldn't have always just been up here. It actually will put one down here over in India. And it thinks that this is for Fort Wainwright, um, Alaska here. It thinks it belongs in this location. So how do we fix that? We, we got our locations, but it's not being specific just to the US. So there's, a, there's one way that we could try to fix that. And that way is by actually bringing in the full state name. So that way there's less confusion. It's not an abbreviation, but it's, it's longer. It's the full state name. And usually Bing is a better guesser at that point. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna clear out our filter selection at this point. We now see our, there we go, zoom out. Um, and so now we see again, we see we have this over here in India. Let's go and get a full state column. How can we do that? Well, I'm going to come over here back and we're going to transform our data. We're going to bring in another column. And the column right now doesn't exist. We don't have a column that is the full state name. But I do know where I could get that information. I could get that information from another table. Uh, and the table that I'm going to do is I just use this quite frequently in my classes. So let's go to Wikipedia. Um, but I'm just going to start typing in here wiki state abbreviations. So I've got wiki state abbreviations and right here, the list of US city, US state and territory abbreviations. If we click on it, this actually has a table for me that has the state abbreviation along with the full state name. I just need Power BI to access this data. So I'm going to use the web connector to do that. So I'm going to copy out our web address and go back into my Power Query editor. We're going to come up to new source and I'm going to want to connect to the web. And it's going to say, what's your web address? It's the one that I just copied out. We're going to click on OK. It's going to ask me, how do I want to connect? There's no need to log in. This is just a public website. And after we do that, we will see in just a second a preview of the different tables that we can actually bring in. And we want to find the one that actually has a column with the state full state name, and let's make sure we have the state abbreviations. We do. This is probably the one that I'm looking for. So I'm going to say OK. And so now it's going to bring that in. And just to make this a little bit cleaner here, uh, I don't need these first four rows of data. They don't actually have my state name or anything. It's uh, just kind of like the column headers, so to speak. So I'm going to just remove those top four rows just to make this easier to see for everyone. And now we're looking good. So I've got column one, which is the full state name. So why don't I actually name this? I'm going to name this the full state name. And then over in column four, I have the state abbreviation. So I'm going to go with the state abbreviation. And this is just going to help me for what I'm about to do. And I don't need all those extra columns for right now. So I'm going to come up here to choose columns. I'm just going to get rid of them because all I care about is the full state name and the state abbreviation. Well, why do I care about those columns? Well, what I'm going to do is a merge. And what the merge is going to do is bring over any columns to a existing table. How does that work? Because here's what I want. I want these full state names to be brought over to my geography table. So with me being on the geography table, I'm going to come over and I'm going to merge queries, which is just saying, hey, I want to bring in extra columns that are in a separate data table. So I'm going to click Merge Queries. It's going to say, OK, geography table is what you're currently on. Where do you want to get your extra columns from? Where, where do they exist? Well, those extra columns I'm wanting are in that codes and abbreviations table. All right, it says, OK, well, we can do that. But how do you want it to be done? Like, you just don't want me to slap them there because you want to make sure the data makes sense in the rows that they're being attached to, right? So what we do is we have to basically find that key. And for my Excel people, this is just like doing a VLOOKUP. So I'm going to say, you know what? I want you to match the records based off of, and then we're going to ignore the privacy levels here. I want the columns to be matched off of the state abbreviation. So I want you to go AZ 
I want you to look for any AZ in the second table and bring back all the, the, the data associated with that row. And we're going to pick our join kind. I'm going to do enter because what enter means is uh, only matching rows from both tables get returned. So if there's rows in the second table that don't match the first table, they don't get there, which we don't want them. We only want it if the abbreviations match each other. So I'm going to hit OK at this point. And now notice it has brought back a table. And now if I click in the white space in the background of this table, it actually shows me what is associated. Arizona AZ. Well, is that what we want? Let's take a look. It definitely is. That is what row one is. It's the uh, Arizona state for this one. So I don't want, I can't pull up a whole table. I got to now make that selection of well, what columns did you want me to bring in? So the way we pick what columns we want to bring in is we do our expand icon. And I don't need the state abbreviation because it's already part of this existing table. I'm just concerned with the full state name. And I'm going to uncheck this use the original column name as prefix. So I don't have to do as much work. We're going to click on OK. And there we go. Now I have the full state name, which is good. And we can see that they all match up perfectly. So I was able to bring in another column and it just looked for the matches and it put it in row by row by row. Last thing that we need to do is we need to make a column that has our city as well as our full state name. And I'm going to do this a little bit differently. If you've never seen the add column from examples feature, it's great. Um, I did the city state abbreviation using the custom column where you actually have to put in a little bit of M language in the background. However, the add column from examples allows you to type what you want to see. Let me come over here to add column and go column from examples. I'll zoom in. And now all we do is we type what we want. So for row one, what do I want returned? Well, I want the city of Ganado. I'm going to double click in here. So I want Ganado. Get that out of the way. And then I want the full state name of Arizona. And then I just hit enter. And it didn't quite pick it up. So now let's try another one. So now I want Scottsdale, Arizona. So we're going to go Scottsdale. Oh, and you know why I didn't pick it up? Because I misspelled. So it's saying add call from examples is perfect here. It's like there is nothing called Arizona in that row. So I have no clue what you were asking for. So let me go change that up here. Let's see if that can fix it. So let's actually spell it right here. So Arizona, hit enter. And oh, I got an extra three in there as well. So notice that this is even neat too. It knows I added an extra character that didn't exist. And so it's like, oh, well, maybe you want the number three after all the state names. So the add column from examples is very uh, intuitive here. Let me get rid of that. That's what I really want. And it is working perfectly. Now, sometimes you have to do that two or three times for it to really figure out what you want. But for this case, it worked out perfectly. Only doing it once as long as I typed it in correctly. So now I'm going to change this merge. I'm going to say this is the uh, city full state name. And then I'm going to click on OK. And it's text data type, which is perfect. So now let's see if we get some better results in our map. So I'm going to go close and apply here. And I'm going to bring up. Um, so now notice right here, we see that Alaska, we have that, we have that Fort Wainwright over here in, in India. So I'm going to come over. I'm going to get rid of the one that we used initially. Now I'm going to bring in the full state. Uh, da, 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 where did it go here? City and full state name. I'm going to drag and drop it on over. So it's going to go in location. So Bing again, it got us again. It doesn't know what this is. It's just random text to it. So we have to tell Bing to put on your, uh, put on your category glasses of look at it a specific way. So let me click on the full city. Let's come up to the data category. And say, don't treat it as just random text. I want you to treat this like an actual place. And we'll zoom out. And if all is well, we should not, once it's done thinking, have anything else over uh, in our Alaska. So just to make sure here, let me click on uh, Alaska. And notice we don't see anything over in our Alaska. We don't see it over here in India. So Fort Wainwright is actually somewhere over here. I'm not exactly sure where it's located. And you might be saying, well, Matt, what about this one down here? This does not look good. It's in Mexico. Well, that is one of the limitations when you use Bing Maps and you just use the text fields for cities and states. If you want it to be picture perfect and accurate, there's one way to do that. You have to have latitudes and longitudes. 
if you have the latitude and longitude information in your um, in your data source, you are going to be golden. You don't have to go through all of these extra steps. Uh, so hopefully this was helpful to you. Uh, we talked about how to get our maps to work properly for the most part, uh, and we learned how we could do a merge of that as well. So I hope you enjoyed. Comment below. Let me know what you like, anything you want me to talk about in the future, and I would love to do a blog on it.